Good day, grade 12. Welcome to another lesson with Kumalo M, the Geography Sangoma. Grade 12s, I hope you are enjoying the lessons that we are sending you and we hope that you are getting ready for the examination. So we are just going to revise a little bit on mid-latitude cyclones. Now, this topic is a topic that is going to come in your paper 1 uh, of your geography examination. This topic forms your paper 1. Now, we have to look at what the exam guideline is saying about the mid latitude cyclones. So, the exam guideline will require you to know the different names that are used to call a, a mid latitude cyclone. They call it an extra tropical cyclone, a frontal depression, or a mid latitude cyclone. There are some words that I'm going to just, names that I'm just going to introduce to you as we go through this revision. So, you have to also know that general characteristics you have to know the areas of formation you have to know the condition necessary for the formation you have to know the stages of development you have to know the cross section you have to be able to draw a cross section as freehand cross section through a mid latitude cyclone or through a cold front a warm front a cold front occlusion a warm front occlusion so today we are also going to look at the warm front occlusion and the cold front occlusion to understand better grade 12 what we mean when we talk about cold front occlusion and when we talk about the warm front occlusion and how do we identify it on a diagram or on a synoptic map we will also look at the impact of human activities on social and economic and also look at the environment impacts of mid latitude cyclone the possible precautionary measures or the management strategies remember we can't prevent this it's a, a it's a climatological phenomenon we can't stop it from happening but we can manage uh, the, 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 the 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 impacts of the mid latitude cyclone we'll also look at the identification of the weather system uh, on a synoptic map and look at satellite images of a mid latitude cyclone and how to identify it on a synoptic weather map the identification of stages of development on a synoptic weather map we are also going to look at the impact of south indian high pressure and the south atlantic high pressure on the movement of the cyclone and we are going to also look, be able to read and interpret of the weather symbols predicted on the weather impact Now let's look at the the information about let's look at the information about the mid latitude cyclone. Now the first thing that I want us to know, grade twelve here, it will be the area of development. So we have to understand where the mid latitude cyclone develops. So they are located in the middle latitude or temperate latitude. That is between. 30 degrees and 60 degrees north and south of the equator. What do we mean when we say 30 degrees or 60 degrees north and south of the equator? What we mean, grade 12, is that between 30 and 60 degrees on the northern hemisphere, this mid latitude cyclone form, and between 30 and 60 degrees in the southern hemisphere, these mid latitude cyclone form. They form at the polar front where warm westerlies and cold polar easterlies they meet. So the two air masses will meet at 60 degrees north and south of the equator, and they will form a polar front when those two air masses move parallel to each other. So another thing that we have to know, grade 12, will be the other names that are used for the mid latitude cyclone the other names will be like the moderate cyclone the extra tropical cyclone the temperate cyclone or a frontal depression this is now the one that they love the most they will say mid latitude cyclone or they will call them the frontal depression so you must know these names grade 12 so that they don't trick you in an exam and then we have to look at the conditions necessary for development looking at cold polar air mass from the cold polar easterlies and the warm tropical air from the warm westerly winds they meet so the two air masses they meet the cold air from the polar region and the warm air from the equator from the tropical regions they meet and when they meet they are going to form the polar front this now causes an imbalance in energy so there will be an imbalance in energy so why is there will be an imbalance is because these two air masses they are coming carrying different air content the other one is warm it's light and it tend to rise and the other one is cold and it's very dense so 
that will definitely cause an imbalance in energy distribution because of the difference in temperature so that imbalance will be caused by what the difference in temperature then the differences in wind pattern looking at the wind pattern as direction contribute to the resultant formation so now the different wind pattern of these air masses now are going to contribute in the formation of these mid latitude cyclones so for the mid latitude cyclone to form there must be cold polar air and there must be warm tropical air that meets up and then they'll form a polar front and then that's the initial stage of a mid latitude cyclone in the formation now let's look at in terms of south africa we know great of that in the exam we are going to be asked about south africa so let us have a look at on what is needed from us now the first thing that is needed from us is that we must know that these mid latitude cyclone they are more prominent they are more severe they usually occur in south africa or over south africa in winter why is that it's because remember our south atlantic on the western side and our south indian high pressure cell on the eastern side now they have they've shifted north what allowing the uh, cold front to pass over an area and yes it will be a cold front that will pass over the interior why not the warm front because the warm front is bent further south so it's very very important for you to note that grade 12. let's hear what I say here the northward migration of the ITCZ and with it the migration of the high pressure cell results in low pressure system moving over the southern part of South Africa. And then you will also be required grade 11, grade 12s, or uh, to know the characteristics of a mid latitude cyclone. Now, remember, characteristics of something it's what make up that thing, it's how you can identify it and it how it behaves, it forms a characteristic of that particular what we call a, a weather a phenomenon now look, let's look at the characteristics here it is intensive low in the center of this system the intensive low pressure is in the center of this system the clockwise movement of air in the mid latitude cyclone in southern hemisphere so it is moving clockwise we know that it's a low pressure system and it's occurring in the southern hemisphere because we, that is where we are in the southern hemisphere south africa southern hemisphere so it the the, the where the system is moving clockwise and then there is a presence of a cold front once you see the presence of the cold front i'll show you the symbol of a cold front and the warm front the presence of a cold sector which is an area of cold air behind the cold front the presence of a warm front with its warm sector which is an area of warm air behind the warm front yes so we know the warm sector that is an area of warm air behind the warm front we also have to take a, 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 a serious look on the isobar pattern which is over and then as it changes stages they become more circular now it moves from west to east so this is the general direction this is not the movement of air around this pressure system but it's the general movement of this system so this system will move from west to east why does it move from west to east because it's driven by the strong westerly winds there as you can see grade 12 the reason why our mid latitude cyclone will move from west to east it is because they are driven by the strong westerly winds it doesn't matter whether it's in the northern hemisphere or in the southern hemisphere but it's going to move in the same direction which is from west to east because it is driven by the strong westerly winds and then it affects the western side of the continent in the middle latitude and then the diameter are between 1500 and 3000 kilometers it travels at a speed of about 50 to 60 kilometers per hour the lifespan of this system is up is between 4 and 14 days they usually occur in families two or more i'm still going to show you how these 
make that you choose to end up in families or okay in families it forms all year but are better developed in winter yes in south africa they only affect us in winter because that is when our high pressure cells they are in their northerly position now here is the diagram to just quickly show the characteristics of the middle latitude cyclone you can see now grade 12 there is a symbol of our cold front then behind the cold front that will be our cold sector so it is a front behind the cold front it is what it is our war our cold sector so that is the cold front and behind is the cold sector that is our warm front there with our symbols there that is behind the warm front it will be our warm sector we can see the weather stations are showing us a clockwise rotation of air around this pressure system we've got circular isobars as this develops into a mature up up until it reaches the occlusion stage as we can see now you have to know all these characteristics in a diagram this is how you 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 you, you identify a mid latitude cyclone on a synoptic weather chart so on a synoptic weather chart that is how we are going to classify or point out or identify our mid latitude cyclone now here is another diagram to show where the mid latitude cyclones are formed you can see there your presence of your polar front grid dwells so there is the presence of the polar front there so that is where exactly in position where our mid latitude cyclone are forming so they form there between 30 and 60 degrees north and south of the equator so there you can see my warm air there from the tropical region and you can see there there, my polar cold air there grade 12 that is meeting to form the a polar front end now when we say grade 12 the mid latitude cyclone it occurs in families what do we mean look at this picture that this synoptic map that i'm giving you here is a mid latitude cyclone this is a mid latitude cyclone and this one is a mid latitude cyclone so they occur in families so that means one mid latitude cyclone is going to form after the other so you can even identify which one is the oldest or which one is the first to form that means here it will be this one why because it is in its occlusion state and then followed by this one as you see that it is uh, the, the, the 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 warm sector becomes narrow and narrow and narrow up until it becomes an occlusion front now here we come to the types of occlusions grade 12 now there is a cold front occlusion and a warm front occlusion so what i can explain to you here in simple ways to understand it just note the air behind the cold front now look at they might give you behind the cold front temperatures and give you ahead of your front temperatures they will give you temperatures in either in the in, in a form of a weather station or they can even write cooler air and behind cold air or write cooler air ahead and, the, and then write cold air at the back so now let's see what they can do now in the next time for a cold front now a cold front occlusion how do we see a cold front occlusion you can see the air behind the occlusion is very very cold and the air ahead the the cold front occlusion is warm so when the air that is ahead of the occlusion front is warmer than the air that is behind it it is a cold front occlusion once the air behind it is warmer than the air that is ahead of it then it's a warm front occlusion that is how you can differentiate the two grid twelves. so a cold front occlusion is air ahead of the cold front is likely warmer than the air behind the cold front these causes the warm air in front to be uplifted along the cold front so the air ahead of the cold front is likely warmer than the air that is behind so if the air that is behind of that of uh, occlusion front is cold then it is a cold front occlusion if the air behind this front is cold 
smaller than the air that is ahead of the front is then it's a warm front occlusion so it's all about that so this causes the warm air in front of the the, the to be uplifted along the core front the rising air cools condensation takes place and forms nimbus stratus clouds and these results into what we call rainfall then the same thing applies there in the warm front when the air ahead of the the, the occlusion front is colder than the air behind the occlusion front this is result this results in air behind the, the occlusion front and the warm air in the warm sector rising over the cold air in the front so the air that is behind if it's cooler than the air that is ahead if the air that is ahead is colder and behind that occlusion front it's cold it's 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 warm air then it's a warm front occlusion so we look at the air that is behind that occlusion front if it's colder then it is a cold front occlusion if it's cooler or it's warmer than the air that is ahead then it's a warm front occlusion so that is how you see it it. Now, we are also going to look at the stages of development of a mid-latitude cyclone grade 12. We are going to look at the initial stage, the development stage, the mature stage, and the occlusion stage. So now, in the initial stage of development of a mid-latitude cyclone, we look at the polar front is stationary. So this is where now the polar front is stationary and the air masses are meeting. So the warm westerly and the cold polar easterlies, they blow in opposite direction along the polar front. The different air masses do not have the same density. Remember the other one is cold, the other one is warm. So they will not have the same density. That means the cold one will be more denser than the with the warm air the warm air will be a less dense the temperatures will be different and humidity will be a difference remember humidity is to do, humid it talks about uh, moist and uh, and wet and arid it is cold it is dry sorry therefore these two masses do not mix so they will meet and will move parallel from each other to each other they will not mix instead they will form a polar front and then friction develops between the air masses that is the initial stage of development then the mid-latitude cyclone goes into the development stage in a development stage grade 12 that is where a wave develops in the polar front and then a small mass of warm air extends into the cold air and rises this rising air causes a low pressure in the center so what happens in stage two is that there is a development of a wave it's a kink a wave is developing now small air masses of air extends into the cold air and then starting to rise now forming a wave then we have the mature stage the mature stage of a mid latitude cyclone now we can clearly see our cold front we can clearly see our warm front our cold sector and our warm sector and we also see the rotation and the I suppose so I beat more now becoming more secular now what is happening in the mature stage the low pressure intensifies it moves into the westerly wind belt away from the polar front so it starts to move now it starts this uh, 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 weather system starts to move now the well-developed cold front and warm sector develops cold dense air moves faster and forces the light a humid less dense air in the warm sector to rise so we know also in terms of speed you have to also know that now the cold air will move faster than the warm air hence now this will cause the warm air in the warm sector to rise the cold sector becomes larger than the warm sector because the warm sector narrows and narrows up until we reach stage number four grade 12 where we talk about the occluded stage of a mid latitude cyclone now what happens now now is that the warm sector continues to narrow the cold front overtakes the warm front uh, cold air wedges in under the warm air so the warm sector continues to narrow as this cold front catches up with the warm front it continues to narrow and the cold front overtakes the warm front cold air wedges under the warm air the warm air then becomes isolated from the ground and this is called occlusion so it now as this 
air, warm sector become narrow and narrow. At a later stage, this warm air becomes uh, isolated from the ground and then we reach the what we call the stage, which is an occlusion stage. So you can see here also I have some three mid latitude cyclone. You can see this one was the first to form, followed by this one, and this one was the last one to form. So it's very important for you to note that grid top. And another thing that I want you to look at is this table. This table is very important now. What is this table all about, grid top? It will be about the cold sector, the cold front, the warm sector, the warm front, and the cyclone as it is approaching. So it explains to you the weather pattern and how the weather pattern changes as the cold, uh, in the cold sector, in the cold front, how is the weather patterns in the warm sector? as the cyclone is approaching so now i'm going to look at as the cyclone is approaching the air pressure steadily decrease the wind direction changes to northwest the speed wind speed increases slowly the temperature cools around eight degrees celsius there is a slow rise of relative humidity and then cloud cover high and thinner clouds alto stratus cirrus stratus and cirrus clouds starts to form there is no precipitation as it approaches and but a good but decreasing with nearing front but as it is moving across i can hear it's approaching but as it is moving across the interior so there is a difference between approaching and as it moves over the interior so as it moves over the interior obviously it's going to come with heavy rainfall it is going to come with a uh, 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 cold temperatures so all those weather conditions will happen as this uh, mid latitude cyclone moves over an area so you have to also know that table grade 12 now i want us without a wastage of time uh, because we don't have time here grade 12 the changes the reasons for the weather changes in a cold front why it changes now the temperature the wind the cloud, cloud cover the cloud type and the air the pressure and the rainfall you have to understand your weather changes in terms of those factors now temperature decreases as a cold front approaches the wind backs because uh, it becomes southwesterly from being northwesterly and cloud cover increases the cumul the cloud type will be cumulonimbus cloud the pressure will decrease then it increases after and will have a heavy rainfall over a small area so it's very important grade 12 to note the weather changes as the cold front moves approach across the the, the 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 interior and note as it is approaching what it happens so as it moves over the interior these are the weather changes and these are the reasons to that um weather changes and then the impact of mid latitude cyclone on humans economy and environment that is where some or sometimes your paragraph question is going to come great well. you must know the positives that the mid latitude cyclone has and the negatives so the positives we look at in humans we say winter rainfall determines the type of crop that are cultivated the rain replenish water in the dams so we're going to have more water in the dams snow in mountain replenish water when it melts so when snow melts we are also going to get what going to get water what are the positives in the environment winter rainfall that is necessary for winter crops we've got production of winter crops results in food security then when you look at the economy the positives of mid latitude cyclone on the economy is that the production of winter crops will benefit the gdp the country will make money but now what are the negatives the snow that falls is dangerous for humans for people and then extreme cold can result in power cuts and disruption of human activity so when it's more cold people will tend to use more electricity then there'll be power cuts and destruction to human activity bear winds that develop in warm sector is hot and dry and can encourage the spread of field fires we get we get gale force winds because behind the cold front results in stormy conditions over the ocean and is a danger to sh to ships the heavy rainfall uh, heavy rainfall from the cold front leads to poor visibility and traffic accident and mountain passes may be closed if the snow if there is snow then in the environment snow that falls in danger is dangerous for livestock the extreme cold damage crops and livestock the bear winds they damage vegetation because of dry warm conditions the gale force winds damage crops the heavy rain causes floods which is negative for crops and livestock and leads to soil erosion 
and then how it negatively impact the economy expensive it's very expensive for farmers to protect their crops during winter uh, and livestock the floods can damage crops and impact the economy negatively leading to food insecurity which you can put them but now what are the strategies to minimize this impact of meat latitude cyclone we must have aid and monitoring the development of the mid latitude cyclone early warning systems for people to be prepared evacuation evacuate low lying areas to protect it against flood keep livestock in bands to protect them against the cold plant winter crops that can resist cold people should stay indoors for protection against the cold wind and rain i hope you understand the mid latitude cyclone it was just a small revision if you watch this video grade 12 and solve the questions that you get from previous question papers i promise you you will ace the exam this is from me kumalo m the geography sangoma have a lovely evening bye bye